So we turn now to former Attorney General of the United States, Eric Holder. He served in the Obama administration. Former Attorney General Holder, thank you for joining us. This really tragic case is not just about enforcement. He was deported four times uh, and still kept coming back, uh, brought us to this point. So why are there so many gaps in our federal law enforcement system? Well, there's clearly the need for comprehensive immigration reform, and that means coming up with sufficient resources, law enforcement resources along the border, um, but also having a, a system by which we are able to process people who have a right to asylum in this country. Uh, we've been talking about getting comprehensive immigration reform done for a number of years, and it simply um, simply hasn't happened. There are two, there are at least, you know, there are a few components um, to it, um, and Congress needs to be about the business of finally finally getting it done. And this issue is also happening in the context of a bigger issue in this country with guns. This is someone who was, uh, who had interacted with law enforcement at least four times and was still able to get a weapon, an AR-15 style weapon that he used in what authorities are calling an execution style killing. Why is that? How can someone who uh, fit that profile get a weapon so easily? Well, clearly he should not have had access uh, to that that assault weapon. Um, in fact, nobody should have a, um, access to a, assault weapons um, for a ban on, uh, on on the sale of those weapons. But given his history, um, given the fact that he was an illegal um, immigrant here in the country, he should not have had the ability to get that weapon. And so you can get them, though, through private sales. Um, there is still the gun show loophole. I don't, he could have gotten it there. Um, there are gaps in our in our gun uh, control safety um, statutes and regulations that have to be patched. And again, this is something that we've been talking about for years, that the American people overwhelmingly are in favor of. It, it is time for our Congress to do the right thing, uh, protect people in this country from the gun violence that has become almost a pandemic in this nation. I mean, the biggest killer of young people in this country now is gun violence. Uh, we can put a stop to this if we will just put in place um, you know, sensible gun measures that, again, are supported by the vast majority of the people in the country. And I wonder what you make of this. Earlier in this case, Governor Abbott released a statement identifying the victims here, the victims as illegal immigrants, which they have now, his office has now admitted, that is probably not accurate. What do you make of all of that? Well, I thought that what the governor said was abhorrent. I mean, the notion that he would elevate their immigration status above their humanity is an indication of who he is and the way he views, um, you know, certain human beings. The focus should simply have been on the fact that these people were the victims of um, unnecessary, um, illegal gun violence, lost their lives, um, and that should have been the focus. The fact that they were here um, perhaps, you know, without authorization, and now we're finding out that, in fact, at least some of them probably had the right to be in this country. That was essentially irrelevant. But Greg Abbott, Greg Abbott, the governor of Texas, decided that he wanted to make an issue of the fact that at least that he thought that these were Ill illegal immigrants, as if somehow, some way, that made their deaths um, less reprehensible, that made their lives, you know, somehow um, less valuable. It, it was just an awful statement, something that he should be ashamed of. I do want to move on to another topic here. The, the office that you used to lead, the Department of Justice, uh, they're dealing with a number of cases involving the former president, Donald Trump. Uh, th these are, are cases that range from the January 6th insurrection to the documents case. Just last week, uh, the Trump lawyers released a letter uh, insisting that Congress order DOJ to stop investigating the former president over uh, the documents case. What's your response to that demand? Is, 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 is there any basis for it? No, there's no basis for that kind of, uh, that kind of letter. Um, it violates separation of powers. Um, it puts Congress on the other side of law enforcement. Um, would they have done the same thing during the Trump administration? I'm sure that they would not have. Um, you know, the Justice Department has got to act independently, follow the facts, follow the law, make determinations on that basis, and not take into consideration any, um, any kind of political games that people are trying to play. This is something that I hope, and I'm sure, the people at the Justice Department will simply, uh, will simply ignore. So of these investigations that are swirling around the former president, I mentioned two of them. 
one involving the documents, one involving January 6th. There's also one in Georgia as well, uh, a case in New York uh, involving hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. Which do you think, as someone who's deeply uh, knowledgeable about the legal system, which do you think is the one that poses the biggest risk to former President Trump? Well, you know, I actually think that all of them do. And um, I'm not sure that anybody should be in the, the business of trying to grade which one is, is the most important. I mean, the retention of, you know, classified documents and, and the use of them in an inappropriate way potentially threatens national security. Um, his involvement in the January 6th obstruction and insurrection is obviously something of great concern. That was an insurrection designed to stop the transfer of power. Um, his attempt to uh, influence uh, the, the count, the vote in, in Georgia, you know, asking for 11,780 votes was clearly something um, that was inappropriate. All of these things, uh, I think, are serious violations, and especially given the fact that, you know, the subject of these investigations, the potential target of these investigations, is a former president of the United States. I think all of these things are uh, extremely serious. I also think that the, um, the case in New York that has already been indicted is a lot more serious than people um, have come to come to understand. I mean, that was a close election that uh, he won against Hillary Clinton. Had this information come out that he had paid off, uh, you know, a former porn star um, to hide the fact of an affair that he had with her, uh, might have influenced people in the three or four or five states that were, um, you know, critical to his to his election victory. So I think all of these cases are um, extremely serious. The other side of this is, of course, the case the DOJ is also dealing with involving the current president's son, Hunter Biden. Uh, there is an IRS special agent who is now seeking whistleblower protections over allegations that that department mishandled that investigation. Do you have any concerns about... Uh, how that investigation is being handled. And it's been going on since 2019. What's taking so long, in your view? Hard to know why it's taking so long. I mean, I don't know, you know, what's going on in terms of the investigation. But I'm, I'm confident that it's being conducted in an appropriate way. Um, you know, the person who is handling the case, who is uh, the, the chief investigator, is a, a former is a U.S. attorney who was appointed by the former president. He's a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney. In, in those kinds of cases, Maine Justice, that is the people here in Washington, D.C., tend to keep their hands off those cases and allow the people in the field, politically sensitive cases in the field, uh, to simply, you know, run their course. And so I'm, I'm pretty confident that the investigation is being done in an appropriate way. On the other hand, this whistleblower, um, who is claiming that things were done um, improperly, obviously should be um, talked to and to see if there's any validity to the claims that he has made. So on voting issues, this is something that you've been working on the last several years. Uh, there was a case in, uh, uh, in the state of North Carolina where now the state Supreme Court there has effectively removed itself as a check on partisan gerrymandering, really opening the door for the Republican legislature to, uh, to, to uh, change the balance of power in that state. Uh, what is the consequence of that, not just for North Carolina, but for a pending Supreme Court case that's coming up? Yeah, the North Carolina Supreme Court's decision to essentially reverse a prior North Carolina Supreme Court decision that was really about four or five months old um, is really an abomination. Um, there, that was a decision, the new decision, is not based on principle, um, it's not based on precedent, it is simply based on personnel or change in the personnel um, on the Supreme Court. Um, and the result of the new decision is to allow, essentially allow, partisan gerrymandering to um, take effect in North Carolina, a place that before a lawsuit that we brought had a, it's a 50-50 state that had uh, 10 Republican congressmen, four uh, Democratic congressman. After we won our lawsuit the and had fair districts redrawn, the congressional balance went to um, seven to seven. And this notion that somehow, some way, the courts are a function of who serves on them as opposed to the facts and the law that they are supposed to consider is extremely dangerous. It's the same thing that we see in the United States Supreme Court, where a change in personnel was the thing that resulted in the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Again, Facts hadn't necessarily changed, law had not necessarily changed, um, but people on the court 
um, had changed and a 50 year precedent um, was overturned. So what happened in the federal Supreme Court was wrong and what happened in the, um, the North Carolina Supreme Court uh, just last week was also, uh, was also wrong. All right, Eric Holder, thank you very much for joining us on all of those uh, wide ranging issues. All right, thank you.